Welcome, I'm Grace Ann Frederico, Executive Director of the Manatee County Bar Association, and I'm here today with Judge Bob Ferentz, and as part of our Manatee County Bar Association historical project, we are here today interviewing what we consider our vintage attorneys. Next, we have another one of our legends, Bill Cackless. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Appreciate the invitation. Hey, Bill. Always great to see you. You look fabulous. Uh, <laughs> let me just uh, start because I've known you for a long time and I know um, I've always considered you a Palmetto guy, but I don't actually know how much further that goes back. So how, how long have you been in this area or did you grow up here? Uh, no, I didn't grow up here. Okay. Uh, 1964, okay. I came from uh, Dade County, Miami and was employed with the SS Kresge Company at Cortez Plaza. And uh, between 64 and 69, when I returned after law school, I had spent time in the Coast Guard and law school and then came back and practiced law. I began in June of 1969. So just to back up, you're, you went to, for example, elementary school or whatever down in Dade County, Miami Dade County? Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh. I went to uh, University of Miami. Well. I went to uh, law school at Florida, and I uh, grew up in western Pennsylvania. And I came down to uh, Tarpon Springs, lived with my grandmother for a year, went to high school there for one year. Uh, at once... I came to Florida and I had a nice car that my dad provided because I had to uh, show for my grandmother around. She didn't drive. Of course, she had to go to church, had to go shopping, had to go to doctors, etc. So I had a nice car. And I drove around Tarpon Springs and saw some uh, high school girls playing tennis. In western Pennsylvania, where I grew up, was coal, steel, brickyards, that kind of stuff. And there weren't any girls in tennis uh, outfits. In fact, there were no tennis courts. <laughs> but I saw that and I said, oh, this is for me. So that's the history. <laughs> was there a tie with Tarpon Springs because of your Greek heritage? She was there. Uh, okay. My grandmother uh, enjoyed that uh, that heritage. And she enjoyed going to church there and the, the people that she spoke broken English, okay. so she was she was more or less at home there. So how did you end up making the move to this area in Bradenton? Initially, I was shipped here by the Kresge Company. They are the forerunners of Kmart, mm, okay. and I worked for them right out of undergraduate school between going into the service and the law school. So they shipped me here from Dade County. Well, they didn't ship me. I <laughs> drove myself. <laughs> anyway, that's how I ended up here. And then you went to, at some point, University of Florida Law School. Correct. And then ended up getting back down here to practice law. Correct. Okay, and then that began with uh, a firm. You got together with some partners, associates. How'd that start? Miller and Gallon were partners. They uh, had an office over by the Methodist Church. Uh, the church ended up buying the property and tore the building down uh, by early 2000s. But anyway, they were partners. They offered me a job, and I got started there. Uh, didn't leave there until 87 or 88. Was Joe Venable there at that point? Joe came about 74. Four. So it was Miller, Gallon, Cactus, and Venable from 74 to about 88, something like that. And, it's, and during that period of time, Tom Gallon would have been in the uh, uh, legislature, the Florida legislature, correct? The whole time, yep. Okay. Yeah. So that either picked up the caseload for the rest of you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yes. So, in, in, as, as you know, being a, a trial attorney and transactional attorney and all, um, in 1970, the Constitutional Amendment, Florida Constitutional Amendment, changed the, the structure of the judiciary. And at that time, uh, Tom Gallon would have been in the Florida House? Or the Correct. Okay. So, yes. did that affect 
Any, I mean, how, what do you recall about that time or how that affected things? Well, we had quarter record judges. Uh, Claflin Garst, I recall as being one of them. And then they went to county judges, and the first one I recall is uh, Roberta Knowles. They had uh, Justice of the Peace as well early on. Uh, Frank Arpaio was one, and uh, Jack Travis was north of the river. That was an interesting deal going to their courts. Was Jack a lawyer? No. He thought he was. No, he thought he was a judge. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was interesting. But uh, yeah, then it changed around. We got county judges, and as you well know. Uh, yeah, they had a, there was a judge on the island. Um, I never went out there. Okay, uh, and, but I, there was a judge in Palmetto. Um, yeah. Bill. Anyway. Bill Lau came in. Bill Lau. Yeah, he came in after. Uh, after Travis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did that affect your practice at all as far as instead of dealing with JPs or kind of ordinance? Not, not really. Those, okay. had a, you probably remember, they, they were informal. <laughs> and sometimes it was more entertainment than what was on television for sure. <laughs> but then when, they be, when county judges, when they made the two-tiered two system, yeah. uh, that would have been a big thing, I would think, in, locally for Judge Knowles, Roberta Knowles, as a first female. I mean, do you recall, was there what the general feeling was, or if that was, everybody um, thought this was wonderful? <laughs> uh, there, there was very little discussion about the fact that she was a female. Right. Except, uh, I think, one of the attorneys who ultimately became a judge referred to her as Queen Roberta. <laughs> well, if you want to turn and look at, at her picture there, <laughs> right in the center of uh, Jack's, uh, mm -hmm. and there's her tiara. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all in fun, as far as I think, <laughs> and uh, everybody... Everybody got along, basically. I mean, it was a much different world then than it has been in the past 20 years in my practice. Much different. How so? Uh, much more congenial, and you knew, and the reason, <clears throat> one of the reasons for that is you knew everybody. You knew, you knew how to interact with them. Today, I don't want to say today, I don't practice today, but. Uh, the last 20 years or so. <clears throat> there were times I'd go to the courthouse and sit down in the courtroom and I would know who the judge was. And the attorneys, I'd look around, I didn't know. Really, I think I may have known one or two, but I'm not sure. Well, back in the day, not only did you know them, you knew their families, you knew how they acted when things got tight or things got hot, uh, whether they went... Uh, you know, got a little strong, or how they how they reacted, and, and uh, now you, it's just a different, it's a different world. Well, back in the day, say 1970, mm -hmm. that, that painting there represents the Manti Bar. Correct. At that time, so you're in there somewhere. I'm in the back row here somewhere, and and Jack told me, he said you're back there somewhere. I had to stick you in there. So I said, <laughs> okay, thanks, Jack. But <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I'm not sure. But. So how did you get started trying cases? Uh, Tom Gallen was in Tallahassee, and Jack Miller wouldn't go to the courthouse to try a case. I guess that would do it. Huh? Next, next question. <laughs> the next one. Okay. Yeah. Which judges did you try cases in front of? Uh Judge Gilbert Smith was there. Judge Hensley was there. They were the circuit judges. And that they did probably 90% of the uh, circuit cases that uh, uh, came to court in Manatee County. And the, the circuit judges in Sarasota rarely came up here. Uh, Judge Silvertooth, I remember, 
having uh, matters before him on a fairly regular basis. Uh, I can't think of any back in the 70s now. Mm -hmm. uh, rarely did any of the others come up this way. They didn't like to come to Manatee County. There was something about I don't know, they didn't like the air or something. <laughs> Some things haven't changed. <laughs> Did you like any judges more than others? Judge Silvertooth was an interesting man. He was a, uh, he had Indian heritage and his family background in Florida was interesting and he loved to talk. And he, he was a, he was a good good guy, and he was in right now. The other, I highly respected mm -hmm. any any judge that I showed up that I had a case with or showed up in court. I didn't to make any difference to me who they were or how they treated me. I always had the utmost respect for them, mm -hmm. and I've told my uh, both of my children went to law school and. When they came out of law school, and I said, I want to tell you one thing. I said, the judge may be wrong, or you think the judge is wrong, but the judge is always the judge. Mm -hmm. You'll respect that person and respect the position. And I think they did. But I know that I did. So if you say, did I like one? I liked the guy or the lady that talked a lot. Personally, there was a circuit judge that came up from Sarasota occasionally, Evelyn Gobby, and I'm sure Bob knows Evelyn Gobby. She liked to talk a lot. She'd like to know who you were, you know, family-wise, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So she was um, interesting to talk to. And the other thing that's interesting about that is you mentioned that with judges and Judge Roberta Knowles, one of the first female judges, Judge Evelyn Gobby, one of the first female circuit judges, um, and I know you're being humble but proud. Your daughter is a circuit judge in Manatee County. Well, in the 12th Judicial Circuit, actually, yeah. but stationed here in Manatee County. Correct. Yes, so sir. I know you've got to be proud of that. We are. At, the whole family is extremely proud of her, definitely. Yeah. Your son used to be one of my law partners yeah. years yeah. ago. He's in Tampa now. Good, yeah. good. You're doing well. He, yeah, he does. And then now... T your daughter Terry, she's married to uh, a uh, DeSoto County boy, Correct. and uh, which is where Judge James Parker's from. So you've got some connection or relationship with him too, yeah. right? And what is that? Jim and I go back to law school. We were in the same class together, and uh, early on, freshman year. I don't know how we got to talking about it, but he said he liked the bass fish, and one of them, I said, I like to fish. I don't bass fish because I'm used to fishing in the salt water, but I said, I'll go if you want to go, <laughs> just to go. So we did, and uh, spent a lot of time on Orange Lake. Ultimately, we graduated in spite of Orange Lake. <laughs> and. Uh, he went to Jacksonville, but he couldn't stand it. And he called me one day and asked me if I could see if there was a uh, position in Manatee County. <clears throat> he ultimately came, practiced with uh, another character, Bob Marshall. And uh, Bob was the county, there was a county prosecutor back in those days. He, he prosecuted misdemeanors. And Judge Parker was his uh, assistant, but took care of the civil practice too. So he got uh, into this back into this area. He was a native of uh, DeSoto County, and he wanted to come back to this area. And ultimately, he he went back to DeSoto County as a county judge. And we maintained a relationship, uh, fishing and hunting, and just family. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> he knows our children very well. We know his children very well. Gone to their weddings and all of that stuff. He's he's uh, it's a great family. 
Yeah, you, I, you've been very consistent with, with that, with the friendship, and also now I think about it with the, with the law firm, starting Miller, Gallon, Cackless, and Venable, then eventually it became Cackless, Venable, Wit. Correct. Okay, and then all the way up, and now you're retired? I retired in uh, January of uh, 2020. And it'll be two years next month. Yeah. Right before the COVID, smart move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've heard from judges and other attorneys that you were a fantastic trial attorney. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> that is the, the I've heard <laughs> there are all other, good things. Okay. There are other so, words I've heard. And that you had a signature style. I did. Yeah. People have told me that, and they wanted to know how did you develop that. What was it? I don't know. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're known for a signature style. A signature style. You're sure it wasn't mine? Signature. <laughs> Uh, well, I, people have told me this, and I don't know where it comes from. In fact, my daughter told me this. Not that I tried any cases in her court. I couldn't do that. But she came to practice here <clears throat> in the late 90s, I think it was. Yeah. Anyway, she stopped me one day and said, Dad said uh, something about... Some of the younger lawyers here think you're a little, uh, well, they're afraid that you're going to kick their ass. <laughs> I said, what? I said, no, I, I've never threatened that. I, no, I just, it, no, I never threatened any. Or, I said, well, they think you're mean or something. I said, Is that what we're talking about? I don't know what we're talking about. <clears throat> I like to be prepared. I didn't like somebody saying something that I know to be untrue mm -hmm. or not either factually or legally uh, accurate just to try to convince somebody that <laughs> needs uh, hearing the uh, argument. I didn't appreciate that. Maybe that's what they were talking about. But I never, I didn't know anything about signature. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Have you noticed anything different in collegiality? Again, the numbers now are much bigger, but, oh, yeah. um, but yeah. with regard to the collegiality of, of, of attorneys now versus maybe back, back in, in the day, as we say. Oh, there's no doubt. I was the treasurer in the early 70s, 72, 73, somewhere in there. And there were 40 dues-paying mm -hmm. members. And you knew them. You knew their names, and first name, and last name, uh, what kind of law they practice, how they treat people. You knew everything. And uh, that's a huge difference. And it, it, it was a much more friendly uh, situation, just because you knew them. You, and you knew how to treat them. You didn't uh, step on their toes, and, you know, they didn't mess with you, and everything was... Congenial, shall we say. <laughs> and later on, th and I think one of the problems, maybe the problem, I had mentors. Jack Miller was a, 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 a fanatic on ethics. He didn't want anybody to accuse our firm of being anything except above board. And uh, Tom was likewise, but uh, he of course, had a lot more background in uh, uh, trying cases. And he helped me a lot, even though <laughs> he was gone a lot. He, you know, I could open up the file and see his research and see how he interviewed uh, somebody in a deposition. And it was, it was I considered the mentors that showed me uh, the right way to do things. And, a way, and the right way to treat clients and, and the opposition. And I think that was lacking. Uh, the numbers, the numbers of attorneys just exploded in the past 20, 30 years. Of course, I was uh, partially responsible for that. <laughs> um, with, with Tom Gallon, 
getting into politics and being mm -hmm. in the, the Florida House and the Florida Senate mm -hmm. at, at various times, obviously. Um, I guess at some point you got into politics with the City Council of Palmetto, correct? Yes, sir. And when was that? <clears throat> that was in the 70s. There was uh, uh, three, I served three terms there of two years each, so it would have been six years in the 70s, probably 74 to towards the end of uh, the 70s. So. That was an elected position. Oh, yeah. And, and would you ever think about politics now, or is it, the, is it very similar with regard to the divisiveness? Uh, did I ever think about getting back when I retired from the city council? Okay. <laughs> no. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I had my hands full yeah. with, with my uh, uh, firm. I was done with with that, and I enjoyed it at the time, and it was, it was again, a learning experience for me, again, dealing with people and seeing how city government operates. You have to deal with a mayor, and, and then you have a police department, and these people are, you know, there's always issues. So uh, six years was enough. Good. Jane, you have anything? So... What are your hobbies or special passions now that you might be following? I spend a lot of time reading stuff that I want to read rather than those law books over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I am on a uh, regular exercise routine, mm -hmm. which I think is important. I've had some health issues. Uh, I enjoy going to North Carolina. We have a house there that we've had for uh, 15 or 16 years. And if I would go for 10 days or two weeks, that was about all I could do mm -hmm. because of the, my mind was always at the office. Uh, and now when I go up there, my mind is nowhere. Nice. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> what day is it? I mean, that kind of thing. And when I'm up there, you know, I still exercise, do my walking and reading, but that's about it. I just spend a lot more time uh, doing things that I want to do. So uh, I gave up fishing and I gave up my boat. Uh, when they just wasn't able to use it. So I think rather than take care of it, fix it, and clean it, or get rid of it. I used to enjoy that a lot, but no longer. Well, let, it's just open, uh, open range right now. Is there anything else uh, you want to like to just talk about with regard to your experience with the Manatee County Bar, the bar, Florida Bar in general, the, uh, the attorneys, the judiciary? The judiciary, I believe, is much more capable much more informed. It doesn't make them better judges, <laughs> but they're much more uh, informed. I think that in, uh, <laughs> it's a little more informal, especially when there was no jury or clients involved back in the day, 70s, 80s, up in there. And, uh, Again, you knew the judges much better. And now there, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I retired, there were some that I knew who they were, but I really didn't know them. Mm -hmm. uh, never practiced with them. Uh, before that, you know, you practiced with a lot of these individuals that became judges, and you knew them. Well, that ended. Uh, so the judiciary, I, I think, in, in many respects is... How do I put this? Uh, more formal, more legalistic, less personal, and less fraternal, shall we say. I think that's very well put, and I think that's yeah. very accurate, frankly. Yeah. Uh, well, Bill, again, thank you very, very much for taking the time to oh, do this. Right. That means that's a lot right. to us, and it's that's very right. helpful, and, and especially for younger attorneys to see this also. So, yeah. I would encourage... Uh, 
uh, for the benefit of the uh, clientele primarily and for the benefit of the bar that young attorneys do find a mentor, even though it's not even in their own firm or find somebody that they can rely on to get them started down the right road. They helped me, I guarantee you that. I was. I don't know how anybody comes out of law school prepared to practice. It's just, there's no way. Mm -hmm.